we are the co-producers and artistic directors of the human exhibit. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this um, how many of you have heard the saying, theatre can save lives? You are liars, I just made it up! <laughs> liars! Um, but the reason I start with that is because theatre has played a huge role in our lives. I first started theatre when I was 11. Um, complete accident, I auditioned for the role of narrator. They casted me in the show instead. I, I wouldn't say I was typecasted for a very long time. I was the Indian boy, I was the Indian prince, I was the Indian king, I was the Indian merchant, I was the Indian Indian. Um, <laughs> But, but as I started going into like secondary school and college and things like that, I started playing characters that were a bit more nuanced, that had a bit more confidence, that had eloquence when they stood on stage and they spoke, but that those characters were so different from the person playing them. The person who was struggling with his identity, his masculinity, his femininity, his sexuality, and, but these roles gave me solace to be someone I wasn't. It gave me space to figure out who I really was and I will be really honest, theatre is the only reason I'm actually standing here today. Because theatre, too, in my words, kind of saved my life. Because it gave me the space to be. And through theatre, I then went into spoken word, and now I kind of do both. Um, and it's always a chance to tell different stories, right? But let me tell, give Ian the chance to tell his side. Hi, everyone. In, unlike De Denesha, I did not start my theatre journey when I was 11 years old. I instead started my journey about four or five, five years ago actually. Um, and I started out based on pure coincidence. I went to London, watched the musical, came back and, and I was like, I must be in this, this theatre scene here. And then I got a call from one of my friends and I found myself in Short and Sweet. Right after that, I was cast in a musical called Aladdin, the musical comedy. And that's why I started out. I really kicked off my whole theatre experience and my theatre life. And I would say, if it wasn't for theatre, I would not be who I am today. I would not have come out as gay. I would have not been doing all these things. I would be stuck in my bubble, in my parents' house, completely denying my whole self. So it is because that I found theatre and I found my voice and I found where I belong and who I belong with is why I am here today. And well, I'm here now speaking to you guys. Yeah. And um, so then I founded the theatre company called I Am Ent Entertainment with my partner Michelle, but she's moved to Amsterdam, and then I found this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I will let him tell you about the shows we do. Uh, so the first show we actually worked together, which you'll see in a bit, is the show called Silk and Strings, The Truth of Bullying. It's the, um, I was playwright for the show, Ian was producer, and one of the things, the first thing that show taught us is that, first of all, we work really well together. The second thing it taught us is that that play talked about bullying and suicide and when we talked about something that was super super personal to us we realized how much people resonated with it we were able to raise money for befrienders uh, and we actually had a lot of people come up from the show with very very emotional reactions and we started thinking wait so these stories and ideas that are very very personal to us seem to also resonate with other people and so that sort of touched the nerve in the kind of stories we want to tell and because of the success of Silk and Strings we figured this is what we are going to do. We're not going to do Broadway plays or, or, or all those kind of things. We are going to do things that matter to people. And that's where I came up with the idea the human exhibit in mental health. And then I told Dinesha about it and he was super excited about it. Yes, that's um, a urinal. That's a urinal, yeah. Uh, we were, I, I was inspired by a show called Duality. I'm not sure if any of you know the show. It explored um, themes of gender as well. Uh, but the thing about that show, was it was great it was a it was an amazing show just that a lot of audience could not watch all the pieces unless you went for like three days so what i wanted to do is i wanted to make it like a fine art gallery where the audience would walk around with a tour guide and watch pockets of small pieces so for the human exhibit mental health we had anxiety we had bipolar we had borderline personality disorder bulimia gender dysphoria and a whole lot more the thing about the human exhibit is that the event and the event space itself is part of the show. So in the, or in the original human exhibit, every single corner of the event space was part of the performance. We shoved audiences into the toilet, we shoved them in narrow corridors, we kept them in open spaces. They all became part of the show as well. 
And one of the best things that came out of human activity mental health, I'll share a personal story. A close friend of mine came to watch the show with her fiance. Um, she's into theater, he isn't. She suffers from anxiety and panic attacks. And the moment they left, her fiance turned to her and said, I finally understand what is happening in your head. So when you tell me you have anxiety and panic attacks, I could never understand it. But I finally understood. Right? And that's why we kind of feel like theatre, especially with the Human Exhibit, allows us to tell those stories. The Human Exhibit Sex and Gender opens on the 4th of July. We're taking over an entire single-story bungalow in PJ called Aku Sibuni. Basically, the pool is performance, the bedrooms are performance, the hallway is a performance, kitchen. Audi- the kitchen is performance, dining, audiences get to experience everything. And I think we've had all the speakers before cover some amazing stuff. You guys have talked about gender equality, inequality, uh, gender norms, we're covering all of that toxic masculinity, we are going on the LGBT spectrum because we can, uh, but we, <laughs> we can, um, and we should. And I think anything, if you notice what's happening in Malaysia, especially with the recent video that came out, I think we Malaysians are kind of tired of other people telling us how to feel and telling us, oh, this is wrong or this is right. So we decided to sort of rewrite the stories ourselves and tell the stories that nobody wants to talk about, but we feel that Malaysians want to talk about. Yes, and the last thing, if theatre can change our lives, I hope theatre can change your lives as well. Thank you so much, you've been a wonderful audience. Thank you to all the speakers as well, and the organizers. Thank you! What, what we are looking for is, we're looking for people who want to talk about the show. Um, if there's collaborators who want to help us access different places to talk about the show. Um, this show is fully funded by ticket sales, uh, we don't have funders. So everybody who can come and watch the show, that'd be brilliant. Uh, you can find it on ptex, ptex.com, very soon. Um, but we're also looking for collaborators uh, who would allow us spaces where we can talk about the show because shows like this allow other shows to be made as well. It starts here and then the ripple effect continues. Thank you so much. Thank you.